Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking through modulation of electromagnetic waves. So, specifically AM, which is amplitude modulation, FM, which is frequency modulation, and phase modulation, PM, for analog signals. So you could be saying, wow, that's a lot of information. It is. And one of the many questions that that could bring up is, what do we mean by an analog signal as opposed to like a digital signal? Analog here is going to be short for analogous. So it's analogous to something else, or it's a representation or related to something else. So in this case, we could say mechanical sound waves are analogous to the electrical voltage that is produced through the microphone. By the way, I've done a screencast that explains how sound waves can be converted into current or voltages, and I'll put a link to that in the upper right right now. So this electrical wave right here, this representation of voltage, is going to be analogous to the mechanical wave that's coming in. And then as it's going out, the electrical voltage wave over here, or the current over here, is going to be analogous to the sound waves that are going to be produced by the speaker. So that's what we mean by an analog signal. I think a lot of people use the term analog and they're not quite sure what it means. They just know it contrasts with digital, which is based on like ones and zeros primarily. So we'll get into that as time goes on. But for now, we need to do an important lesson on how modulation works, what is modulation, why it's done. All of those things are really important to understand. It's a stepping stone to get to our final destination of understanding the basics of how cell phone communication works. So let's go ahead and get to it. So first of all, what is modulation? Well, what modulation is, is it means to systematically encode one or more of the three primary traits of a carrier wave. So it's amplitude, frequency, or phase with information from another wave, like from a microphone. So if you take a look right here, let's say this is our signal, like this is the information we need to encode. We could encode that signal in an AM carrier wave and end up with a wave that looks like this. Notice that these crests right here are going to correspond to a greater amplitude in the AM wave and the troughs right here are going to correspond to a lower amplitude in the AM wave. Whereas FM works differently, the crest right here is going to correspond to a greater frequency and the trough right here is going to correspond to a lesser frequency for a frequency modulated wave or an FM wave. So you've all seen this on the radio dial. There is an AM band and an FM band on radio receivers and cars. And that's specifically what we're talking about. You may not have listened to an AM station before, but those are the ones that come in. Usually they have talk radio and are very staticky. There's a reason why there's a lot of static. It's not because your receiver is not very good, it's because the technology is prone to corruption, basically. All right, and let's continue to introduce and think about modulation. So first of all, like I said before, if you have a crust here, a crust here, and a crust here, and you embed that information in a regular carrier signal, so if you just have an oscillating wave like this one right here that's produced, by an oscillator, like regular waves. You're going to do this with very short wavelengths or very high frequency waves. And the reason that we'll do that is because that'll make the antenna much smaller than otherwise. So that's why we want a carrier with a high frequency right here. And that's why we can't just send these information signals like they are right now. You would need an antenna that would be in the range of like kilometers or something. You can't do that. So we have to create a carrier signal and embed this information into this carrier signal over here. Well, how do we do that? Well, how we do that is for an AM system, you're going to change the amplitude of the wave to correspond with the amplitude of the information signal that's coming in right here. Troughs over here are going to correspond to a much smaller amplitude for the signal wave that'll get through. And crests like this and like this will correspond to a much greater amplitude. And so if you notice, that's a way we can encode this information signal in the carrier signal and it can be transmitted because the frequency is much greater than this frequency up here and we can transmit this wave with antenna that's going to work well. 
All right, I do want to reiterate the fact that this is prone to interference. You can get a lot of interference with an AM station. Any electrical fields that your receiver receives along with the signal can interfere with what you're hearing, which is why it sounds very staticky. But there are other methods that we can use to modulate a wave, and one of them is with FM. So with frequency modulation, FM, we encode the information in the carrier signal in a different way. So if you notice, you've got your crest over here. This crest is going to correspond to a greater frequency of waves, and the trough over here is going to represent a lower frequency of waves, and that's how we're going to go about encoding it. All right, well, that is what modulation is for a basic introduction with those two different types. You could ask the question, why is modulation used? So one reason I've already mentioned is because the antenna size is going to be much less for something like an FM signal than it would be for something like an audio signal. Like, it just becomes impractical. You couldn't have a radio tower that would be almost miles high. That doesn't make sense. Secondly, another reason why modulation is used is to reduce interference and allow for multiple signals to be transmitted. So if you're dealing primarily at one frequency, for instance, you can tune other frequencies out and tune into certain frequencies with the receiver. And that means that different radio stations, for instance, can transmit at different radio frequencies. And if the receiver is not focused or receiving at that certain frequency, the other frequencies just go right by it. You don't hear every radio station when you're focused just on one with your receiver. All right, so just to recap, how is information from the signal wave encoded into an AM wave, an amplitude modulated wave? We could say that crests are transmitted as greater amplitude in the AM waves and troughs are represented as lesser amplitude in the AM wave. For a FM wave, you can see in this animation here that crests correspond to a greater frequency and troughs correspond to a lesser frequency for an FM wave. All right, and a more complex way to modulate a wave is called phase modulation. So phase modulation, you can see over here, is much more complex. And what's going to happen is you end up with an end result of a wave that looks something like this. We are transmitting waves that have been encoded in other waves. At the end of the transmission, of course, you have to do the decoding through a device called a demodulator. That's totally fine, and it's totally doable. All right, and so just to clarify over here, this is going to be your modulating wave, the blue wave. The orange-red wave is the carrier wave, so this is the oscillating wave that's created that will encode this information over here, and this green wave is the resulting wave, or the modulated wave as a result of this. And so one of the benefits of phase modulation is that it's very resistant to corruption, so you get a very clear signal if you're using something like phase modulation. All right. And I just want to stress at the end here, if we talk about demodulation, one way to think about this, we worked basically from the top down for modulation. When the receiver gets the wave, the receiver will get something like this. It will be demodulated from this, and you will filter out the carrier signal, and then you will be left with this information signal. If we know that we have a certain carrier signal, we can filter that out and get the encoded information out of it. And we have transmitted this information over great distances, which is pretty awesome. Same thing happens with an AM signal. We modulate it going from top down, you could say, but we demodulate it on the receiver ends going from bottom up. We receive the AM signal, filter out the carrier signal, and we're left with this information signal, whether it's like a voice coming from a radio program or something similar to that. All of these are examples of analog modulation, so this is how old school FM and AM stations work. It's not exactly how cell phones work, though, but it is an important step to understanding how cell phones could work in terms of modulation. We will move on to digital modulation as well and think about how that's achieved, but understanding analog modulation first is a very good stepping stone for understanding digital modulation. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. I will be covering all of the major concepts in physics courses and other ideas as well, like this is a side idea here into trying to get to the goal of understanding how a cell phone could send information, like information in a picture for for instance, to someone else. In any case, I hope you have a great day. Take care.